Well, hi, this is Custom Works, and I'm Clint Allen. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the cooling system on the 7.3, answering all your questions. What type of cooling fluid to use? Pipes, clutching systems, the radiator, the cooling system for your oil, Delta. What is Delta? Stick around, find out. Everything that you need to know, including thermostats. Why not to use a 160? Why not to use a 205? Or if you're towing, these are gonna be answered in this video here. So stick around. Well, we'll start out with the front of the truck first, the grill. Now, if you're running anything besides a standard grill, you know, even the aftermarket upgraded grills, and you've got crap over the top of the grill, or you've got that fine mesh like uh, window screening, um, you're just causing yourself future problems because all the crap that comes on the road is gonna end up jammed up in there and your system is not gonna be cooling properly. Gotta keep that front grill open. Keep any extra accessories out of the way, but let that air flow through there. Next is the air conditioning. Yeah, this is part of your cooling system itself. Now what we're talking about here again is when you're traveling on down the road, all of the big items that you're sucking in or running into ends up right here. If you haven't cleaned, if you have air conditioning and you have not cleaned this, you're going to need to get in there with a power washer. Now we got to be very careful how close we get that power washer. Otherwise it, th this isn't caused by power washing but you'll end up bending these fins over. They're very very finicky. Um, all of the large debris ends up in here and most of the time you don't notice it but you'll see on the back side here all of that these items you, you can see is all been forced through so this is blocked up right here you got to keep this unblocked um, down in the description will be some uh, AC foam that I use to spray in here to uh, help unlock all the debris and garbage that gets stuck in the air conditioning portion and we also have a video that shows on a air to air how to clean from point A to point Z again on how to do a proper cleaning of whether it's the radiator air to air or this air conditioning unit. Next on the list Your air to air, obviously OBS, we don't need to worry about this. You didn't have this, but if you have an air to air unit in your truck, this is where the finer debris that works its way through that AC ends up in here. And I'm here to tell you, this really gets crudded up on 20, 30 year old trucks. If you haven't spent any time cleaning this, and running a power washer through, you gotta get her done. And the best way, you know, set, it, set aside a weekend, empty out the radiator, pull the radiator on out, get this unbolted, it's not difficult at all, and pull this on out, get it cleaned up. And once again, there is a, down in the description, a video that shows you how to do it, the products, how I do it, how to clean the inside, as long as you have it out, clean the inside out, all that dirt and debris over 20, 30 years 
if you're running the standard uh, system for the 7.3 where the tube came up from the engine and got sucked in through the turbo that all ends up in here so once again the video will show you how to clean this out completely so then you got next next we're gonna have the radiator and the same holds true here also gotta get them cleaned out there is so much crud that gets built up in between and as it's going through the air conditioning as it's going through the air to air as it's headed into here the finest debris ends up in here got to get it cleaned out and is aluminum a full aluminum radiator better than this core radiator i've run both and what i have found is in extreme high heat towing the full aluminum radiator does run hotter runs hotter by 12 to 22 degrees the only benefit in my opinion with the full aluminum radiators is is that chances of it leaking has been minimized because you don't have the plastic caps on here that's one less area but under towing high heat i have had that temperature degree difference because that aluminum even though it should cool down faster you would think actually does not and in the winter time the full aluminum radiator also causes the truck to run cooler than what it normally would because that aluminum holds on to the cold um, so right there is uh, good information if you're thinking about going to a full aluminum depends on what you do with your truck standard every day just driving around yeah i wouldn't see too much of a problem with it once again if you get into towing well we're gonna have some heat differentiations there that might not necessarily be good for your oil and for the back of the block and we'll cover a little bit more information on that well hey i hope you're enjoying this video of the basics of the 7.3 power stroke cooling system if you're new here come on in and join the community i've made it real simple for all the newcomers down in the description is the playlist for our 7.3 sensor videos all the sensors that are on a 7.3 power stroke our tech talk videos our hands-on videos our regular videos all 7.3 power stroke oriented we're not out in our driveway we're not out in the field making videos with our cell phones here this is the good information and we're doing it in a proper environment and cinematically for your enjoyment so come on and join and enjoy the rest of the video going into coolant next a lot of questions always show up in the comments oh what type of coolant or i put red coolant in my 95 because it's supposed to last 30,000, 50,000 miles well whole parnelli 6.7 yeah i'm reaching way back here 6.7 7.3 that has a production date got to look at my notes here can't remember everything production date of february 1999 all of these units backwards and that uh, block number by the way is 940613 those all get standard everyday green 50 50 mix period there is no farting around with anything else you'll end up causing damage on the inside of the engine damage to seals and damage to your oil cooler 
So standard green for that. Now you want to add to that this Ford additive. You will need two of these for your complete cooling system. Now it is critical that you just don't dump the radiator and pour fresh in. Get in there, get it flushed out, remove the heater core, uh, remove the heater core hose, get that off of there, get your hose jammed down inside of there with the tubes off of the radiator, flush that on out. Connect that once again, fill the radiator up with water, get that all flushed out. Once that is all out, then let everything drain off and fill it up and flush it out with distilled water. You don't want all the contaminants from your hose, from your house, from the city, from your uh, water pickup system if you're in the country, contaminating the inside of the engine. So go ahead and like I said, flush it out with your hose, but when you get done, make yourself up uh, some type of siphoning system or whatever the case may be and run distilled water through everything. Get everything completely flushed out. Then go through and fill up 50% of your radiator system, your cooling system with the green. Pour two of these in. Top it on off, run it, burp it, blah, blah, blah. That way you're all set. Now the service interval based on Ford's recommendation is 15,000 miles. That you should completely get rid of everything in the cooling system and put fresh in. Why? What happens over time, the items that are inside of the cooling fluid starts to break down and what that'll happen is, is it'll get stuck around the injector cups it'll get stuck in the little ports that go up into the heads it'll get stuck into your oil cooler and end up damaging the engine and causing one portion of it to overheat that's why sometimes you'll see cracked pistons in far back cylinders and everything else is just fine or you'll end up having a uh, ring that is faulty faster than the rest of the engine because one part of the engine is getting much 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 hotter because it's plugged up so anything that is post of that February 1999 is when we move into 99.5. Now everything that is 99.5 on up through 2003 has been made ELC compatible and that is the gold. Uh, to be more specific, uh, gold hybrid HOAT fluid. Um, what the other fluids, the red fluids, the blue fluids, the up uh, hybrid green fluids, they have an acid in them that is not friendly to components in the 7.3, whether what year it is, and it will cause the same thing. You'll end up having breakdown of the coolant sooner you'll have acids that are not supposed to be in the 7.3 cooling system causing eat through uh, if you ever seen in forums or anything like that oh why why do I have oil uh, in my cooling bottle well that's one of the reasons acid ate through the oil cooler and is now spilling into your cooling system. So critical, absolutely critical that 
you can still use the green 50-50 if you want, all the way up to 2003. Absolutely nothing wrong with that. Not a problem. Um, but if you want to go with the hybrid, it's got to be the gold and nothing else besides that. Now, the same thing applies. Same deal right here. Two of these. Fill up halfway, put those two in there, fill up the other all the way up to the top, burp it, blah, 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 you're all done. Now, if you have bought an older 7.3, and you go and you start flushing out the cooling system and she starts coming out rust, well, hold the brakes. Get that all flushed out of there. And the next product on the list here, and this is specifically made for cooling systems, and go ahead and pour four of those, you know, equal it out, Pour four of those in there. Uh, grab yourself a five gallon bucket if you want. Fill it up with water, fill it up with this. Um, mix it all together and then dump her on in. Uh, I usually run it for about three days to five days depending on how bad the rust was coming out. That right there will clean up the system completely. All those little ports that are within the cooling system of the engine uh, all those little fine ports that are in the radiator, uh, in the core, that'll clean all that stuff right on out of there. Same thing applies. Flush it out really good with the old hose and then clean out the rest of it, flush out the rest of it with distilled water. We don't want any of that crappy city water or well water getting inside and causing rust and other issues throughout time. The other question that we always get are products like this. Should I put in extra cooling? These products right here are lubricators and also they have a added cooling chemical in them and there's nothing absolutely wrong with running them. No problems whatsoever. I am saying only use those if you're doing regular towing. And if you're in a cold climate, expect during the fall and the spring to have to get that out of there because during the winter time, that will keep your truck much colder than what it should be. So your fuel mileage is gonna go down, you're gonna end up having injector issues, because the temperature of the engine is not running where it should be. Uh, you're gonna freeze your butt off in your cab is what's gonna happen. So that right there, that, that is the situation if you wanna go the route of putting an extra coolant in there. Um, that type of additive is grandiosos if all you do is towing. I would highly recommend going through if you're, all you're doing is towing and put that in there. Now it doesn't have to be this specific one. There's a whole bunch of them at the automotive store. They basically all do the same thing and they'll all work just fine. You just got to stay away from the hybrid versions that have the acids in them and it'll say on the back if it's a hybrid or regular radiator cooling system. So make sure you read it really well. Next thing is uh, the the old, I think I've got a head leak or some kind of problem like that, which on a 7.3 is so rare, but I gotta, I just feel incumbent. I have to tell you, do not ever use that crap in a 7.3. Actually, really shouldn't use it in any engine whatsoever, but I have used it successfully in a couple engines, um, but the problem is, is that wherever there is a high heat area, that is where it's gonna collect. Really likes to collect right at the top of the heads, and it really likes to collect in the heater core, and it really likes to collect in the oil cooler. 
And those are all the places where you do not want something sealing up that part of the engine. You're guaranteed she's going to grenade. Stay away from it. This is no good in a 7.3 ever. They're just, if you have, if you believe or you have a head leak, a cracked block, or whatever the case may be, just fix it right. Yeah, it sucks. But there's so many 7.3s out there, you're liable to find something very affor uh, affordable and sitting in a junkyard or sitting in somebody's backyard or back of the garage that you know they had grandiosos plans for. Uh, heads are easily available. Uh, uh, all the parts are just still, even after all this time, 20, 30 years, is still easy to find, easy to get a hold of, and most importantly, affordable. <laughs> so we'll move on to the next thing here, and that is going to be the clutch fans. Majority of the time when you're going to have a overheating issue or your heat starts rising, it's more than likely going to be your fan clutch. Um, word on the fan first. If your fan is cracked, uh, chipped, broken out, whatever the case may be, you're asking this huge fan on this basically small bolt to cool your engine down. And if this is running off balance, not only will you shorten the life of your fan clutch, you'll also drastically shorten the life of the water pump and the bearing in that water pump. There's a lot of, a lot of weight hanging off. So these are not expensive and these are not finicky. Majority of uh, uh, fans uh, aftermarket fans are going to be just fine. Um, Ford, obviously, OEM, best way to go, best quality. If you're having a little bit of problems in the old wallet, any aftermarket one will do just fine. But they are thinner. Uh, they will chip easier. They will not last because the quality of the plastic is not as good. Just heed that warning right there. Uh, inside of these fan clutches is basically a viscous material as the fan is spinning and the cooling system gets hot. This gets activated right here and that causes the viscous fluid to run outward and locks the fan in and cools it down. Majority of the time, and this is going to be hard to see, you'll have to get back there with a mirror, but most of the time, this right here, the, the, the seal let loose. And this particular fan right here has got about uh, 600,000 miles on it. So it made 600,000 miles before it gave itself up. Ford OEM. And what happened was is the viscous fluid in the back here basically came out of it, and it just freeze spun. Um, if you're having a hard time determining if your clutch fan did go out on you. Um, basically, and this is dangerous and only for the people who have automobile experience, but this is what we do in the shops, believe it or not. We'll turn the engine on and we'll have one guy inside who will then turn it off and with a leather welding glove we'll just kind of press against it. If we can immediately stop it then we, we know it's shot. It's just a quick way of doing it. Maybe not professional, but that is the way we do it in the shops. But a lot of questions that we get is, Clint, should I get a Ford OEM? Because they're, you know, they're really expensive, or can I get away with a regular one? Well, this is gonna come down to you, and I'll show you why. This right here is a Auto Tech, and this is a replacement for a 7.3. It's supposed to be identical OEM, but it's not. This is a Ford unit right here. This Ford unit 
you can rely on this all day long. Now what you'll see is, if I put them side to side, I'll get in a little bit closer here. If we get in side by side, you notice the height difference is way different. One smaller than the other. So one of the reasons why you're paying for Ford OEM prices is because you're getting a quality built full size fan clutch. The reason why the aftermarket is cheaper is because you're getting less. You never get more for less, period. <laughs> It'll never happen. So this is a choice you're going to have to make. My choice is always Ford OEM. Be careful of the aftermarkets. Um, I have had countless over the years people replace with aftermarkets. They come in and they say, well, you know, my truck is still overheating. To find out that it, it failed within the first hundred miles. Uh, it's just sitting there free spinning inside. It's never kicking in the fan clutch in order to cool the engine down properly. So these, these are a gamble. And do you really want to gamble with your truck, your engine, and having to walk down the road? You know, to me, it's an easy one. So we'll move away from these. Next on the list, we've got the degas bottle. Now, doesn't make a difference if uh, you have a 94, 95, 96, 97, 98, all the way up to 03. It's just in a different area. These right here, the most important part, and I'm sure you might have seen this before, but if you're not in a null, these right here are critical. This is what helps keep the coolant from boiling. Always make sure that your cap is in working shape and is not loose, has not failed, and if you need a new one, this is something that is Ford OEM only. God, I can't tell you how many aftermarkets fail one after another, one after another. And you don't want the engine temperature getting to the point where it starts boiling off the antifreeze and getting gooked up. That, that 15,000 mile interval that we were talking about, that, that greatly lessens itself. When that fluid gets extremely hot, it starts breaking down. And once again, it starts screwing up your cooling system, your oil cooler uh, gets screwed up with your cooling down of your injector tips through your injector cups, and you end up burning some stuff out, and you just sit there and go, well, geez, you know, I really, I really don't like the 7.3. Well, you know, proper maintenance. So make sure that you have a cap, good cap. Make sure it's working properly, engine's hot. You turn it off, you come out here, slowly open it up and let it go shh. You know, don't let it blow up in your face. But, uh, you know, get a rag on top there, just crack it just a little bit, and she'll go shh. If it doesn't do that, you need a different cap or you've got a leak in your system. Moving on to the next thing here. When's the last time that you went through and changed your radiator pipes? Um, good way, easy way to test them, engine cold. Just come up here. If it's nice and stiff, 
yeah, you're good to go. Uh, no cracks. Didn't have a fan blade run up against it like this one right here, uh, or I should say the the fan belt, the uh, dug right in there, caused a hole right there. Uh, if it's really soft, very pliable, that they, they need to go brand new ones, get them put on there. Gates, good way to go. Good quality products there. What'll happen is is if you have a really pliable downpipe or up pipe or even for your heating uh, heater core if it's really pliable and you have a failure of your pressure cap on your degas bottle what it'll do is it'll suck the pipe together because there's so much flow going on inside there it'll run hotter and there's no pressure to keep this expanded and it'll suck itself tight and then you'll think oh well geez you know I've got a bad water pump or I've got a bad fan clutch or I've got a clogged up uh, oil cooler and all it was because you don't see it you go out there and you visually inspect it and because the, the engine is off or engine is idling then the tube comes back to its normal uh, uh, diameter so Keep that in mind, uh, if you do have an overheating problem, that's one of the situations that can cause that. So next we'll move on here to the water pump. <coughs> water pump, most of us here, we all, we've all been there before. Um, water pump starts going bad, you see a little leak out into the driveway starts leaking from down here you got that little hole that little seep hole the bearing has gone bad starts leaking out have a video for that we show you right how to do it uh, every step torquing the whole ball of wax down in the description below won't uh, leave you guessing or having to answer uh, or ask any questions whatsoever so just as simple as that, no need to go any further here. But the next one here, biggest questions that we get is always in the thermostat area. We're gonna answer these questions and get very technical about it. So let me get the, this set aside. A lot of questions come through on the thermostat all the time. Oh geez, you know, I seen a 203 thermostat, I seen a 205 thermostat should I be running those thermostats well let's just back up real quick we all pretty much know what thermostats do and the whole concept is is that when the engine is cold it allows bypassing of the fluid to warm up the block faster warm up the engine faster and then it opens up as the temperature increases and then it when it gets to a certain point so if you have a 205 thermostat it'll open up all the way and it'll block off there's a little hole down inside here right where you see my finger there so it'll block that off so it has no other choice but to go through the radiator and cool down the fluid which keeps your engine in that 2 to 210 range on your gauge. So what I did was is tested it. I took a regular thermostat and I went through and I took the spring off and I forced it to stay open all the time and matter of fact put a little sealer here and I installed it to see what it do. So it, it was constantly pumping water all the time. Outside temperature, 60 to 65 degrees through that week. Ran it for one day, uh, just basically went up to the city, did some city driving, came back, checked on fuel mileage, checked on em engine temperature. So no matter where I checked, with the outside temperature being in that range, with my laser temperature checker, no part of the engine exceeded 110 degrees and no part of the engine was below 95 degrees. That's with this running 
causing the flow all the time, blocking off the bypass hole. So there we have that. This right here is a standard run-of-the-mill Ford AutoZone O'Reilly's blah 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 a standard 195 so I put this in did the same thing um, this right here operated as normal and I went through and checked the temperature of the engine and the engine itself would run as soon as I got in kept the engine running shot my laser temperature checker the hottest part of the engine was on the passenger side which is normal in the back so that right there was at 198 um, the rest of the engine itself including the radiator was at 192 so that gives you an idea what's going on here fuel mileage running this right here greatly improved from running the one that was wide open running running wide open was 12.3 miles per gallon this one right here was 15.4 miles per gallon so an engine a 7.3 running at the proper range you can see how big of a fuel mileage difference that is so Next one is, this is a 205 model from Diesel Site. So installed this, did the same test. Um, got back, little disturbed at what I had found. The radiator itself was keeping itself at 208. Rest of the engine was right around 205 to 200. But the back two cylinders, which is a notoriety for the 7.3, just so you're aware, that's usually where you grenade pistons, that's usually where you grenade uh, uh, rings, that's usually where you have cylinder problems. Um, that right there was way up at 230 degrees. So the point being is that running the high temp might not be a good idea most of us for standard driving can get away with the 205 the 203 205 I mean there's not much difference there but most of us will get away with that but if you're towing I would have to say from my experience now actually doing the tests I would not use these in a towing application. You're going to end up French frying the back passenger part of your engine. And like I say, that's normally when engines come in that have had the living tar beaten out of them or they've not been taken care of. That's usually where we find problems in the cylinders is those far back two cylinders on the passenger side. So right there, I hope that helps you in answering maybe what thermostat you should be using. Fuel mileage, no change whatsoever. It was right at that 15.4 miles per gallon again. What I did on the whole test, no matter which thermostat that I used, I just set the tune to factory. That's it, just straight factory. None of the special stuff that I've got going on in my truck or any of the other trucks in the fleet. Just base, basic tuning. So does it help out with fuel mileage? No, it does not from the standard one. Um, I would happen to say if I was gonna make a recommendation today, if somebody wanted to pin me to the wall and said, okay, you gotta make a choice, I would say running a 200 degree would be just fine, just absolutely fine. Um, it's not too high, it's not too low. That engine is gonna run just fine. There's no other purpose to spend um, I was almost horrified when I ordered the thing. I mean, they wanted like 30, 40 bucks for, for the, the thermostat, the 205, and then they hosed you another like 20 bucks for delivery. I mean, holy <laughs> Jesus. The only last thing that I want to say is that if you have uh, 
that 94, 95, uh, that those model years, may, uh, make sure that you get the correct thermostat because one is shorter than the other for model years. So make darn sure that you get the correct proper thermostat for your model year. Next we're going to move on to is going to be the oil cooler. Yeah, that's part of your cooling system. The oil cooler is a integral part on any diesel if you're not aware of this. That oil has to be kept cool. And in order to do that, the oil cooler, which runs cooling fluid through it, cools down that particular oil. Now, getting a little bit deeper, this right here is a oil squirter. And I'll take a good picture of that too and put, put it up there, but this right here, you got your V8 running, 7.3 power stroke running, and this sits underneath the cylinder inside the block, and this shoots oil up inside of the cylinder. These little guys right here is critical of all diesel engines so you don't crispy fry your pistons and cylinder walls and stuff like that. Now going back to the high temperature thermostat real quickly, that 205 thermostat, if you're going down the road and you're towing and you're going up the hill there is a term that was kind of keyed, but it's not the correct term, all right, just so you're aware, but it's called delta. It's not really the correct term, okay? It was just kind of like, you know, from, from the hip kind of brought up, uh, kind of invented. But anyways, where you have your engine coolant temperature running about 200 but going up the hill with your diesel, the oil, that's why you got an oil temperature sensor sitting on your engine on your 7.3. It's monitoring this. That temperature sensor is going to say, okay, well, the oil's gotten too high, so now I'm going to degas or, or defuel, and I'm going to slow you down, or, or I'm going to you know, purposely pull back the power so you can't wreck me. That's one of the reasons why that oil temperature sensor is on your 7.3. So when you're running that higher thermostat and you're going up the hill, that engine oil is, you know, 230, 240, 250, 260, 280, and it's boiling off. That's why if you've ever seen these oil tests, that you see on YouTube and other places like that. They always pour some in a coffee maker and then they put her on there and they determine how long it takes for it to vapor off. Well, that's happening in your engine. So when you have the high thermostat and you're climbing up that hill and that oil is raising itself up, you're causing yourself a situation where it's taking the important items, the lubricosity out of the oil, and it's really got a high oil temperature, and it almost wants to start boiling at that point, that cooler is there to cool it back down. And the other reason, if you do a lot of towing and you're not doing oil changes at 3,000 miles, and I see the comments, you know, that some of these guys put in my debunking videos, and they're like, well, you know, it, it's still all full of black oil. Well, you have oil burn off, and I can guarantee it's sitting in the pan, it's sitting in your rings, it's sitting all over that engine because you're supposed to be underneath heavy load situations. If you're doing constant towing, regular towing with your 7.3, that oil interval is normally 5,000, you need to bring that down to 3,000. 
That is the cost of doing heavy towing. You got to change your oil more frequently. Otherwise, you end up with sludge and crud throughout the whole engine, causing problems, calling, causing injector issues. You know, there, there's just simple way of keeping your 7.3 for a lifetime. It's just that oil is so important. You got to keep it clean. You got to keep it changed. That's why we run into injector issues, IPR issues, burnt out high pressure oil pumps, early burnout of your low pressure oil pumps. All these problems can be rectified by just changing your oil regularly. It's just that important. So the oil cooler itself, that's what it's doing. And if you don't change your fluid enough for your cooling system, you don't change your oil enough, that right there is gonna get all blocked up inside of here and your oil is not gonna flow properly. The coolant is not gonna cool the oil properly. It can even bypass it, and that is a real issue, um, especially some people who use some really cheap, you know, like STP uh, filters. Bad idea. What you put in is what you get back out of it. So I hope you've learned something today, and you take it easy, and you have a good day. Oh, baby, baby, why you act so cold? Hot